Hi guys, I'm Dr. Downey. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to discuss how to decrease your hemoglobin and hematocrit. So, this is, seems to be an odd topic because a lot of videos are made nowadays on how to increase that because um, iron deficiency and such are quite common these days. But in bodybuilders, the opposite is needed due to the action of anabolic androgenic steroids on uh, 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 on the red cell count. So anabolic androgenic steroids seem to stimulate EPO um, through direct stimulation as well as through angiotensin tensin two, which if you've learned if you've watched my other videos is something we like blocking when using uh, steroids due to their deleterious effects if not controlled. So this stimulation of EPO, erythropoietin, stimulates erythrocytosis and other things which leads to more red blood cells and stuff like that which eventually leads to an increase in hemoglobin and hematocrit. So, the issue with the raised hematocrit in particular, hemoglobin is used by people to possibly indicate that their hematocrit is high. The reason you don't want your hematocrit to be too high or above range is because it, this, uh, it causes a condition known as polycythemia. And more specifically, in the case of steroid use, it would be called secondary polycythemia because it's secondary to the use of steroids. And the issue is that with this is it causes your blood to essentially become thicker or and that puts you at risk of clots or thrombosis, um, heart attacks, strokes, organ enlargement, um, and just organ damage in particular. So we'll look at the traditional method to treat this because um, or what is suggested by doctors uh, to treat this condition. And usually if you're a low risk patient, it involves bloodletting as, um, or venesection um, as often as, well, it, which is, and how often you do it depends on your hemoglobin, hematocrit and iron levels. And then you tend to pair this with a low dose of aspirin to reduce that clotting uh, risk factor. And you would use 40 to 100 milligrams of uh, aspirin daily, or you could take it twice daily. Um, other methods, such as those in high risk patients, this wouldn't necessarily be used for um, just your normal steroid user, is cytoreductive therapy, which is essentially where you start destroying the cell lineages um, and this is through the use of like hydroxyurea or interferon. Um, so I'm just going to tr uh, uh, touch on the main reason for this video and that's because I um, was informed that ACE inhibitors or ARBs or angiotensin receptor blockers uh, um, may reduce your hemoglobin and hematocrit. I uh, may have seen it in an article or something, and so I wanted to go over the research. Um, just in case this may be useful for bodybuilders to know, um, as it's another possible method of reducing your hemoglobin or hematocrit from getting too high. Um, so in this first study, they looked at ACE inhibitors or uh, as you, uh, ACE inhibitors and healthy volunteers, and they did find that um, the mechanism through which EPO is stimulated is through androgens directly, such as your steroids and the angiotensin II, because they both stimulate EPO. And as we know by now, androgens stimulate angiotensin II, which means, and they stimulate EPO, which means they're stimulating EPO through two different mechanisms, um, which would lead to a higher EPO concentration than EPO increases your hemoglobin and others, uh, other things. And they looked, did a quick little introduction in this study, and they, uh, uh, the reason for the study is that they found in mice that were injected with renin and then had high angiotensin II levels that uh, if they treated them with an ACE inhibitor, their EPO actually was decreased. 
Um, and they found a small but significant decrease in hematocrit in hypertensive patients receiving ACE inhibitors. So in this study in particular, where they took the healthy patients and looked at the EPO, these were the results. So as we see, um, the decrease in EPO on day zero compared to day 28 was quite significant. That's at the top because the p-value is less than 0 0.05. So However, the decrease in hemoglobin and red cell count were not significant. So this suggests that whilst um, a decrease in EPO is necessary for a decrease in hemoglobin, it's not necessarily sufficient to cause that. But at the same time, the study was a tad bit flawed because it was done over 28 days, which isn't enough time to really see the changes in red cell count and such, since red blood cells tend to live for 120 days. Um, but the effect on EPO was um, proven. And um, in other studies, it has been shown that a decrease in EPO will be, is correlated with a decrease in hemoglobin. So I looked at a different study, which is a bit more reliable, um, and from the results, they found that um, uh, there was a significant decrease in the le EPO levels, which also led to a decrease, which was significant, in hemoglobin. But as we see, the decrease in hemoglobin, while significant, is extremely mild, um, which you'll find... Uh, in um, most of these trials. So um, they concluded from the study that a greater decrease in EPO led to a greater decrease in hemoglobin, which isn't surprising. But at the same time, they also found that those who responded better to the uh, medications, i.e. those who had a lower blood pressure from the medications tend to have a a greater decrease in the hemoglobin, which could show that if you uh, re react strongly to the hemoglobin, <laughs> to the medication, you'll have a lower hemoglobin. But again, um, as we see on this table, the changes in hematocrit and uh, hemoglobin were, well, the change in hematocrit was not significant, and the change in hemoglobin was borderline significant but you can't dispute that the change in EPO was significant. So if you look at these results and then try apply it to yourself and look at the decrease they measured, would it be enough for you? That's what you need to kind of look, like, uh, look at too. And at the same time, the studies were done in patients who are receiving dialysis and who are already in end-stage kidney disease. Um, so they're already at risk of anemia uh, due to chronic con uh, a chronic disorder. However, in a better study in a systematic review and a meta-analysis, they found that those using um, ACE inhibitors or ARBs were at higher risk of anemia. Um, and when they controlled the confounding variables, which would be something like someone with a chronic condition or something, they did find that the risk of anemia was still higher, showing that even in those who are healthy, the risk of anemia is still higher. So, um, whilst this is interesting to note, it doesn't quantify the drop in hemoglobin, and it wasn't done in um, patients with polycythemia, and that's the issue. There were no studies done in patients who already had a high hemoglobin level or hematocrit level, so we can't say whether the change in people with polycythemia would um, mean that this therapy could be used in people with polycythemia, and as it stands now, it isn't recommended because the change isn't significant enough to warrant it. Um, but if you think about steroid users, the way in which their hemoglobin and hematocrit are raised is through this pathway that the ARBs tend to um, 
abolish, that would possibly mean that if you were using steroids and you combined it with an ACE inhibitor or ARB, that the stimulation of EPO would be much less. So the consensus is that there is adequate evidence to suggest that ACE inhibitors and ARBs do decrease EPO levels, which would ultimately decrease the hemoglobin levels. However, the drop in hemoglobin is mild, but significant, and but we haven't there haven't been studies to prove that the drop in hematocrit is significant, and so far it's not significant. And uh, whilst there aren't any studies of ARBs in polycythemia, I would hazard a guess and say that it wouldn't be that useful. But um, we'd still need studies to show this. And again, those who are using um, anabolic androgenic steroids are stimulating EPO through angiotensin as well as directly through androgens. And with the reduction in angiotensin 2, there's only one pathway that is stimulating EPO levels. So this could possibly be useful in steroid users, but there are no studies to to prove this. So um, just an unconventional method um, uh, for those who are really struggling with um, their hemoglobin or iron levels on steroids. I do not suggest this at all, but it, I have seen it been being mentioned elsewhere, is the use of proton pump inhibitors, which are essentially used to lower stomach acid levels in the by lowering stomach acid levels, you're essentially decreasing the reduction of iron so that it's not being re reduced into its um, um, uh, absorbable state, and thus you don't have as much iron, and therefore uh, uh, and therefore your hemoglobin would be lower. But this is unconventional and would possibly just lead to decreased iron levels with still maintained a uh, red cell count, but who knows, it could possibly, if you're really struggling, I wouldn't advise this because it's unconventional, unconventional, I just think it deserved an honorable mention. Um, so in summary, um, the traditional way to treat polycythemia or an increased hematocrit is through venesection, and that will remain the gold standard. And it's always advised to use aspirin along with that due to the risk of thrombosis if you're really struggling with that, but that would be small doses of aspirin. Um, secondly, the um, use of ARB or ACE inhibitors in reduction of um, EPO levels, whilst that is proven that it does reduce EPO um, levels, there haven't been studies in individuals using steroids who could already have elevated EPO levels, and whether this reduction would be much of much significance to steroid users is unknown. Um, Furthermore, the reduction in hemoglobin is mild, and there is no significant reduction in hematocrit, so it's difficult to suggest whether or not you should use that as a steroid user. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think and what you do to reduce your hematocrit uh, whilst using steroids, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.